<laughs> We're just going to do a series of quick fire questions now, getting some straight answers from our experts here. And we'll start with Sophia McPherson. Hi, I'm Sophia. I'm 10 years old and I attend Radford College ACT. I'm worried about the side effects of the COVID-19 vaccines for kids under the age of 12. Will the side effects be different for kids than adults? Thank you, Sophia. We'll turn that one to Fiona. Fiona, will the side effects on the vaccine be different for the younger ones? Yes, so we don't know yet, possibly, and that's why we're doing the study. So really important to do um, specific studies, as I've mentioned before, in particular age groups, because they might be different. As we've found out with the Pfizer vaccine in young people, there's particular um, side effect in that, and it's just for sort of young people. And so with... Um, under uh, 12s as well, that's why we're tinkering with the doses, um, we have to very safely and carefully have a look at that. But the common side effects, I would imagine, but we don't know yet, will be a sore arm, a fever, feeling a bit under the weather for a day or two, but by and large, bounce back and come back to normal with a bit of Panadol. So that's what we would expect. OK, our next question now comes from Indy Hall. What happens to a body if you catch COVID? <laughs> Beautifully asked, too, can I just say. Uh, Norman, we'll give that one to you. What happens to our bodies? Hi, Indy. Well, the virus goes in through your nose and you breathe it in and it goes into your chest and it goes through the lining, the, 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 like the inside of your mouth. It goes inside that and it multiplies because the virus is pretty nasty and it, all, about, all the virus wants to do is find somebody else to infect. So it, more virus is produced and you cough it out. So it irritates you and you cough. And that coughing allows the virus to pass to other people. Now, in little kids, that's all that happens. You might get a runny nose and a cough and maybe a fever because the army inside your body that fights the virus, the immune system, works very hard and makes you hot. And, um, and, you, you, and that's probably all that happens. And a lot of kids, they don't know they've got it. They get nothing at all. And it's only a very small number of kids, tiny, tiny number of kids who get sick enough to need to, need to be in hospital. So imagine three prime... I don't know how many kids are in your primary school class. Let's say there's 30. If you've got three classes like you and they all get infected with COVID, only one might be sick enough to be in hospital. And even then, they'll do OK. So it's a really mild disease in your age group. So it's not something to stay up at night worrying about. OK, our next question now comes from Amaya George. I'm Amaya George, seven year old, and I live in the ACT. The lockdown was so sudden, and I'm really worried what's going to happen next and how long are we going to live like this? Are we going to die? Anthea, we're going to give you the are we going to die question. Amaya, it sounds like you've got some really big worries. And the first thing I want to say is that you're not going to be alone thinking about big worries like that. And when change happens really quickly, it's normal to feel worried. Even some grown-ups are worried about things at the moment. But it's really important that you know that you're not going to die. So here in Australia, no children at all have died from COVID since the beginning of the pandemic. And even all over the world, very, very few children have died or even got very sick from COVID. The other thing that you talked about was what's going to happen next. And that's a really hard thing to think about when so much is changing. And it's important that we tell you we don't exactly know, but we do know that things might be like this for a little while in the lockdown. It might be a few days, it might be a few weeks, but it won't be forever. And if you keep talking to mum and dad about what's happening, then they can keep you up to date on when things are going to change. I'd like to ask Arthur and Patria what advice they might give as well to our very uh, worried young questioner there. Patria? Um, I would just like to say we're definitely, you know, in a really lucky state where we live in a great country with amazing medical facilities. And so that's a really, really amazing thing where we... Um, know that if we do get COVID, we'll have people to look after us. Um, but I think this speaks to the general disillusionment that young people and children are facing. We're living in this age where this is a crazy, unprecedented time and these anxiety-ridden thoughts are consuming us. And we don't really hear much information about how to overcome that. And it, it just shows the mental impact on young people. Yeah. And I think we need to prioritise that and figure out a way to combat that so that Young people can attempt to live a life where it isn't filled with these sort of, like, very um, extreme thoughts. It's very sad, yeah. Arth? Uh, Amaya, I think you're, you're so young 
And, you know, we love the fact that, you know, our young people usually separate themselves from what's going on in current affairs and they're happier than us because of that. Um, so can you, for, for all of us, don't worry about this. Mum and Dad will take care of it for you. Stay happy, keep smiling, um, eat some lollies and, uh, you know, do your <laughs> online classes. Go for walks, look at the sun and be thankful that we're in a country with, an, you know, a, stra a strategy like suppression or aggressive suppression like Australia and we're not in a situation like India was in or a situation like, US, like the US currently is in. I, su I support all of that uh, right up to and including the lollies <laughs> and I'll simply say a bit of um, moderation there. <laughs>